In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to set up the Hasselblad X1D Mark II. Hasselblad sent me this camera about a month ago and I've been using it for portraits in my studio. So the video today is gonna to go over how to set it up for that sort of environment and for that sort of photography. So let's just get started by looking at the back of the camera and you'll see right away when you press the menu button that the interaction looks sort of similar to what you would see in a smartphone. And if you wanna customize any of these uh, quick access settings here, you just press and hold like you would on your phone and the X comes up and then you just press the X and it goes away. Then if you wanna add something, you just press and hold again and then all the options come up and we're just gonna choose the crop and orientation because a lot of the times I'll be using this camera to shoot portraits which I know are gonna end up on Instagram and so I'm gonna to wanna to have those pictures pre-cropped in camera to eight by 10. So that'll just help me do that. So let's look at the very first thing here, which are the camera settings. Okay, so let's go to exposure. So you can set up your exposure to be in third stop increments, half stop increments, or full increments. I would just like to keep them in one third stop because I like to have that sort of fine adjustment. So the next thing here is the electronic shutter. If you wanna use flash, you're gonna to have to disable the electronic shutter. But if you want to shoot outdoors at more than a 2,000th of a second with available light, you'll need to engage it. Then coming down here to true exposure, I'm just going to go ahead and look at my notes. I couldn't quite understand what true exposure was from reading the manual, but it does say if using flash slash strobe as the main light source and 1 800th or shorter of a second shutter speed, depending on the type of lens, remember to turn off the true exposure option. So a lot of the times in the studio, I'm gonna be at those shutter speeds, so I'm just gonna leave true exposure off. Then coming down here to the AE lock quick adjustments, basically this is exposure compensation when you're using the automatic exposure modes. So you can go ahead and engage these, this is fine, but it's not really gonna be relevant when you're shooting in a studio environment. And then down here under shutter speed limit, I have it set up to 2F. And essentially 2F means that the minimum shutter speed that I will be able to shoot at will be double the focal length of the lens. This will prevent you from having motion blur from camera shake. So for instance, using this 80 millimeter lens, my minimum shutter speed will be 1 1 60th of a second. You can change the setting to be whatever you want, but for me, I'm gonna have this set up to 2F. Okay, then we'll come to crop and orientation. And this is where you can set up different crop masks so that when you look through the EBF, you're seeing uh, these crops and it will help you compose. So you can choose between you know, square or 645, which is no crop, or six by seven or four to five. And you can, you know, have these various settings as well. You can go three to two if you want to look like a 35 millimeter camera, for instance. Uh, but I'm going to choose four to five because that sort of crop is the Instagram crop. And that way when I'm shooting, uh, hopefully I won't have to add on to my backgrounds or, um, and I won't be messing things up. So I'm going to go with four to five. Okay, then coming out of there at quality, this is where you can choose whether or not you're just shooting raw or raw plus JPEG. I've got mine set up to raw plus JPEG. And then coming out of there, we'll go down to focus. And under focus, this is where you can choose the size of your focusing points. I have mine set up to large. I'm pretty sure these are all the defaults the AF assist light is on. Then under manual focus assist, I have it set up so that focus peaking comes on with the outline color of orange. And this is just gonna put an orange lines around areas of your frame where there's great contrast, and this will indicate that it's in focus. Now, if you're shooting something orange, you can change it to other colors like yellow or cyan or magenta, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the default, which is orange. And then coming down here, the zoom level in live view, I have it set to 50%. That way, when you just sort of tap on the screen, it will zoom in a little bit. Okay, then coming out of there, we're gonna go down to flash. And under flash, I have rear curtain selected. I just would like that if there's any 
a motion blur from drag flash or a slow flash duration that it goes behind the movement, uh, not ahead of it, so I have mine set to rear, but hopefully I won't encounter any of that because I'm using very uh, short duration flash. So then under the white balance tool, you can just come down here to this dropper and you can move it around and you can say, okay, this is white and this will help you set up a custom white balance. And now if you go over to the white balance right here on the top left, it indicates that the white balance is 80-40 and that was set up from that custom white balance. But I don't really wanna use that, I'm just demonstrating how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead into the settings here and then set that back to daylight. Okay, then going back into the menus. Okay, then coming into configuration, the very thing at the top here is the limits for the auto ISO. I just have mine set up for 100 and 6400. Then right below that is max aperture, and I have mine set up to full. Now full is gonna give you rounder looking bokeh, but only with the XCD lenses. Whereas normal is just going to give you bokeh with flat edges, but it's also gonna open up the lens a little bit more. Okay, now coming down here, BT mode, that's just as whether or not you're gonna to wanna to use bulb. You can go ahead and check it. It won't really be relevant for most uh, studio applications, but I have mine checked. And then below that is image rating, and this is just gonna let you uh, rate images on the screen. I have it checked, so I think that'll work fine. Now we'll just back out of there. And our next major menu here is the video menu. Now, for me, I don't plan on shooting video with this camera, so I'm just gonna skip this section. And then we'll come down to the gear or the general settings. And then the first thing here under connectivity, this is just where you would set things up to hook up to an iPad. And I only intend to use this camera uh, tethered to a computer, so I've got that set up here in the first setting. So the tethering mode is Mac or PC. And then I'm just gonna ignore the rest of these wireless settings because I don't intend to use the camera uh, that way in my studio. So coming out of there, this is just where you set up the brightness and that sort of thing and how quickly you want the camera to go to sleep. Then under live view, um, you can turn on or turn off exposure simulation. For me, I think exposure simulation is valuable just so that you know you're getting the correct exposure while shooting on the automatic setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and tick that. But under manual, I'm gonna leave that off because I wanna be able to have the camera automatically brighten uh, the electronic viewfinder so that I can see in the dark, which is what I will sort of be shooting in when I'll be in a studio environment. Now, I really don't mean in the dark, but what I mean basically is I want it to automatically adjust so that it will show me a bright image when I'm shooting in an environment that's similar to the one uh, that I'm sitting in right now. If you ticked this box and then went to shoot in the studio on strobe, you're just gonna be looking into a black hole with some exposure overlays, basically. So I would leave this uh, ticked off uh, for manual. And then finally, coming down here to the bottom for live view, I wanna make sure that always start live view in the EVF is ticked on. That way, whenever I lift the camera up to my eye, it'll be showing me what I'm pointing at and it won't be showing me the menus or something else. And then exiting out of this one, we'll come down here to preview. Now this is just where it plays back the picture that you took. So I'm gonna change this actually to 0.5 seconds. And that way, whenever I take a picture, it will automatically display the last picture that I took right there in the EVF. And this isn't really gonna cost me a lot of time because the blackout time is about a half a second. So I might as well see what I just shot. And of course, I'll probably be waiting for my strobes to recycle. So that's how I'm gonna have it set up. You might want it you know, to be no preview and that's fine, but that's how I'm gonna set it up. So I would like it to preview on the back screen. I think that would be great. And then showing me an exposure warning, always knowing more information is better than not. So we're gonna come on down now to the touch settings. And I wanna have move AF point selected. That way I can use my thumb to reposition the autofocus system 
to get it focused on people spaces. Then down here to touchpad for EVF, I wanna have it set up to top right. That way when I move my thumb around this portion of the screen while shooting with the camera up to my eye, I will be able to move the focus point around. Now the next setting is the sensitivity and I have that set to high. It does seem like there is a little bit of a slowness right now that I'd like to speed up. So unfortunately this is the high setting. This might just take me getting used to, but I would suggest high, um, you may want it uh, to be on a different setting. And then of course I want move AF point to be checked because I wanna be able to move the AF point with my thumb uh, while I'm looking through the viewfinder. So let's go on to our next uh, group of settings here. And that would be the custom buttons. Now you can change these three buttons to be different things if you'd like. I'm just gonna leave them at their defaults. And then custom modes is where you could just save one of your more favorite exposure combinations so that you could use it quickly in different scenarios. I don't really use those, so I'm just gonna leave those also at their default. So the storage menu is where you're gonna reformat your cards and decide where your images are gonna be written. Normally I'd have two SD cards in the camera and I would tell it to write to both cards. That way my images are always protected. So to do that, you just wanna come down here to secondary slot usage and select backup images. The overflow will cause you to automatically switch between the first SD card and the second SD card when the first SD card runs out of space. So you might wanna set it up that way too. Now we can just come right out of this one. And then the sound setting, that's just where it's gonna make a noise when you get the camera in focus. Maybe you'll want this on, maybe you won't. I'd like it on just for my, you know, peace of mind. So the power settings are just gonna be where you're gonna set up that auto power off in different situations. And it's all pretty uh, self-explanatory. The GPS is just where you're gonna turn GPS on or off. I don't usually want uh, people who find my images online to know where they were taken um, because I'm often working in the same studio or different studios and that sort of thing. That's just really like a privacy decision. Uh, you might wanna have this turned on in case you're shooting in different environments and you can sort of keep straight you know, what was shot where but that's my personal feeling. And then language, we're gonna leave that where it is, service and about, we're gonna leave that where it is too. And I think the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Now looking at the outside of the camera, if you wanna switch from manual to auto, you just spin the big dial. However, if you wanna lock that dial, just press it down and then there's no risk of you accidentally bumping it uh, by mistake. Also, if you wanna switch from manual to autofocus, you just press this button. And if you have this camera, I would really suggest that you try shooting in manual. I thought the experience was a lot of fun because there's focus peaking and it helps you get things in focus, but also it makes you feel like you're more present and connected and responsible for the outcome during the shoot. And I just felt that this tactile experience was really a good one. So go ahead and, you know, try it out. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. Uh, you know, hit the bell, give me a thumbs up, that sort of thing. I would really appreciate it. Um, stay safe and I'll talk to you soon.